Welcome to the Steve Wilmot Show with the Chamonix Redskins head coach Steve Wilmot. I'm Sean Lerman as we get set for another week of Redskins football here on the WBCB Sports Network. Now, Chamonix now 5-2 and two on the year after a big win on homecoming night over Sallerton. This week it'll be senior night as the Redskins host the Owls of Ben Salem here at Heartbreak Ridge. And coach, with, with senior night, you, know, uh, we were, you were mentioning before that... Uh, you, you really owe a lot to these seniors on the team. Uh, these seniors, since the first day I got the job, and even before, I mean, going back to some of their freshmen and sophomore years, uh, have been a terrific group of kids to work with. Um, I think they're talented. Uh, they work really hard. And uh, I think most importantly, they're like good teammates to each other. They're very supportive of each other. Um, I couldn't ask for a better group of kids uh, to be, you know, seniors in my first year coach. Uh, they, they've, they, they've been terrific for me. And a couple of the seniors this year, you know, quite a few of them, of course, have been starting for a while. A couple of uh, guys who've been, I know Hunter Kelly started since he was a freshman. Uh, now uh, you've got, you know, quite a few seniors who were in their first year, but they seem to have come along really well. Yeah, um, yeah. Across the board, we have, and that's always like that. We have kids who work our, our program kids. They work their way up through, you know, sophomore year playing scout team, you know, junior year playing JV, and then their senior year they get to play and. Uh, yeah, I, I across the board, uh, this group's been great, and uh, you know, whether it's their first year or their third year starting, um, you know, we're just looking to finish the year strong. All right, well, we'll get into this Saturday game now, a uh, big win for the Neshaminy Redskins over the Indians, and you know, in, in that game, it wasn't necessarily the biggest game, as huge plays or anything, but a nice grinded out win, another big game from Will Dogba, 165 rushing yards. Uh, if you can't talk about what the offense did, uh, the offense. Um, I was really happy uh, if I was to draw a script uh, for the first drive. Uh, you know th that went completely uh, to script. Uh, the first drive, I wanted to switch up formations. I wanted to keep Satterton's safeties uh, back where they belong, covering passes. Uh, so what I was looking to do there was uh, mix up formations, uh, mix in some pass and some run. Uh, and go from there. I mean, I guess if I was to script it, you know, it'd be a little bit less plays than we had. I think it was maybe a 12-play drive. You know, if I was to script it, it would be a touchdown with maybe three or four plays. But, um, you know, I, and that's something I address with the team also. Uh, you know, going into the last three games of the year, we need some big plays. You know, we, 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 it'd be nice to, you know, to have an 80-yard rushing touchdown or a, you know, 60-yard pass. And, uh, you know, I, ultimately that's on me. Uh, but it's something I kind of challenge the kids with, you know, let's start making some some bigger plays. Um, so again, the, getting back to the Saturday game, the, the first drive, you know, went, and went just the way we wanted to, spreading uh, the formations around a little bit, switching things up, mixing a lot of run and pass. Um, and then, you know, and then uh, we scored again in the uh, first half. So going into halftime, we're at 14-0. Um, but then Saturday started controlling the ball a little bit. Uh, we didn't get the ball as much as we wanted to uh, in the second half to do as many things as we wanted to do. Um, but it kind of came down to that last drive right after they scored their field goal. Um, and then, you know, from there, I knew I didn't want to throw the ball there. No offense to any of our wide receivers or quarterback. I, I knew we just needed a long, sustained running drive. And, uh, you know, much to my happiness, the offensive line and the H-back and Will Dogba and uh, Mason, I think, even had a run. You know, we were able to just... Uh, drive down the field and put the game away. Yeah, the one big play that I, I definitely stuck out in my mind from the game as far as the offense is concerned was that fourth down and ten uh, completion to Denzel Hughes. Was, I mean, it, it, he was in traffic and, and Mason just put the ball right in there. That had to be great to see as a coach. I thank Denzel because the play before I, I made a bonehead uh, call on a run play and it wasn't there earlier in the game and I was a knucklehead and I ran it again. Uh, and it was a it was a blow up, so we we lost yards. Um, so we called that pass play, and yeah, Denzel, uh, that was a very very clutch catch. Uh, and that our second scoring drive that really kind of uh, kept us moving because without that, we're going into halftime, and then it's seven nothing. And then if they come out and control the ball like they did, so that was a huge 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 play uh, by Denzel and uh, Mason getting on the ball. And now the, the other big plays that, uh, that were, were huge in the game, not necessarily from the offense, but special teams and other two blocked punts in the game, uh, you know, not necessarily blocked right back in the punter's face, but gave you guys some great field position on those blocked punts. Yeah, uh, definitely. Our, our Coach French uh, kind of runs that punt block unit, and 
the first time we do it in camp in the summertime, there's a lot of stress put on it. And throughout the course of the year, you know, he, he kind of keeps that up. He challenges his kids. Uh, you know, he, he calls them their pump blockers. But, yeah, we could kind of we could kind of get a push on them for punt. We kind of use that to our advantage. All right, and that's something that's been pretty good all year. It seems like there's been a lot of pressure on that punt unit. It's clearly working out pretty nicely. Now, as far as the defense for you guys, in the game against Satterton. It, it was really just, it seemed like in the third quarter that Satterton was moving the ball, but other than that, the defense looked really, really good. The defense looked good. Uh, yep, the, f the first half they were uh, kind of stopping them. I think they only had one, maybe two first downs in the whole first half, um, so they were definitely doing their job. Um, yeah, the third quarter they kind of sustained a drive. They, they, they hit a couple runs of that fullback run that's kind of been haunting us all year. Uh, they hit one of those, but uh, you know, I, again, it kind of goes back to Central Bucks South a little bit. They they bent, but they didn't really break. So. All right. Well, a big win over Shatterton this past week, and a big game coming up against the Ben Salem Owls on Friday. We'll take a look at that game when we come back on the Steve Wilmot Show, presented by Aria Health on WBCB1490.com. The ARIA 3B Orthopedic Institute is redefining care in Center City and South Jersey. And our 50,000 square foot location on ARIA Health's Bucks Campus in Langhorne features private rooms, free parking, and nearby hotels. With over a century of experience, the world-class 3Bs, Drs. Booth, Bartolozzi, Balderston, and their partners personally guide you from treatment through recovery. For all your orthopedic needs, call 1-888-ORTHO-3B or visit ARIA3BOrtho.org. At the ARIA 3B Orthopedic Institute, you come first. If you are looking for a car, where do you go? Falconer Auto Group at 4427 Street Road in Trevos is where to go for the best deals in Bucks County for all your new pre-owned cars, trucks, or SUVs. Go to Falconer Auto Group. It's always Falconer to be sure. Go online to falconerautogroup.com. Just remember, it's Faulkner to be sure for all your new cars or trucks. 4427 Street Road in Trevos. Faulkner to be sure. Hi, Merle Reese to tell you about our good friends at the Revere Restaurante Italiano in nearby Ewing Township at 802 River Road. I can tell you that from South Philadelphia to New York's Mulberry Street, there's no better Italian cuisine than that served at the Revere. Start your meal with one of their great appetizers or salads. Entrees include outstanding veal dishes, fresh seafood daily, excellent steaks and chops, homemade pasta dishes, daily specials, and much more. You can also enjoy their bar area, where on most weekends, entertainment is offered. The Revere also does off-premise catering and can accommodate private parties for any affair, including business functions. Call the Revere Ristorante Italiano for more information and reservations at 609-882-6365. 882-6365. The Revere Ristorante Italiano open Monday through Friday for lunch and seven days for dinner at 802 River Road, right off the Wilbertha Road exit on Route 29, in nearby Ewing Township. Don't forget, if you miss any of your local high school sports action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's The Trentonian, or online at thetrentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week, it's The Trentonian. Welcome back to the Steve Wilmot Show with the Shamity Redskins head coach Steve Wilmot. I'm Sean Lerman. As we get set for the Neshaminy Redskins to host the Ben Salem Owls on Friday, we'll go live with the Trentonian pregame show at 6.45 p.m. on WBCB1490.com, and the game will air back at 14.90 a.m. following the conclusion of the game. Coach, coming up against Ben Salem, you know, you know, it's no secret that Ben Salem's had a tough couple of years. It's been a while since they, they've had a big win, but uh, I'm sure still approaching this game like any other because you said Ben Salem plays tough. Uh, ben Salem plays extremely hard. If we let our guard down against them, uh, they have three different fullbacks they roll through there, uh, and either of those fullbacks could could go the distance. You know, the, Ben Salem runs the uh, the triple option, very similar. Uh, the, I, the coach was the coach at Truman, so it's it's the offense that kind of uh, Truman runs, um, and they run the triple option, and they run that midline veer type of thing, and. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they have speed and uh, they have uh, they have linemen that can block too. I mean, their offensive line uh, is pretty good, uh, and we've ch we challenged our defensive line with that uh, yesterday, and I'm sure it'll be reinforced throughout the course of, of the rest of the week. Uh, but they play really. I mean, when you watch film, the, the the thing that really sticks out is how hard that they play. 
And that's something that you know your players will clearly have to be ready for to play a, a tough, hard fall game, even against a team that's had some struggles recently. So uh, that's their offense. As far as defensively, what do you expect to see out of them with their base set? Um, they uh, stay in pretty much the triple stack defense. So it's an odd front where they're covering the tackles in the center and the other tackle. And then they stack three linebackers behind them. Uh, they kind of adjust to formations with the two with the outside guys. So it's a three five defense. So they play a three three, and then the two outside guys kind of adjust based on uh, what your formation is. They blitz a ton. Uh, they blitz a ton. Um, you know, yesterday when I was drawing up my cards, I was kind of going through all their blitzes, and they you know they blitz probably seventy five percent of the time. Um, so they they play aggressive. Their line their linebackers run well. Um, you know, their their secondary uh, can cover when when they're asked to. So, you know, there's it, it's going to be a challenge for our kids this week. But you know, we want them to be challenged uh, because going into the last two weeks of the season, we want them uh, playing their best football they could possibly play. So, when you're going up against a team that that blitzes on a good majority of their plays more than the teams you normally face, who does that put more pressure on? Does it put pressure on Mason at quarterback or on? AJ at center or the rest of the offensive line? Uh, in this type of defense, I think it puts a lot of stress on the tackles uh, because we do a combination blocks. So the tight end and the tackle uh, are blocking the down lineman and the linebacker. So uh, that offensive tackle's got to be ready real quick to pick up that blitz if, the, if, if there's a guy blitzing inside. So it probably puts the most stress really on the tackles. Um, the guards, you know, are there to kind of clean up the mess, and then AJ's pretty much one on one with his guy. So uh, I, I guess that really, definitely the tackles it puts the most stress on. All right, now Shamini, a big game against the Ben Salem Owls this week coming up. And uh, coach, did you get it to watch any high school, college football, or college uh, NFL football over the weekend? Any TV shows or anything? I attended uh, the uh, Temple uh, versus University of Central Florida game. I was uh, very Impressed with the Temple Owls. Uh, very similar to us. They, uh, Temple, uh, I saw a very strong defensive effort. Uh, all they did was give up a, a few field goals, and that was on some field position that you know Temple's offense kind of threw the ball. I don't think Temple's quarterback uh, had his A game, uh, but their running back, you know, their running back ran for 199 yards during the course of the game. So Temple in that game kind of reminded us of you know what we've been doing. Playing, playing strong defense and kind of grinding it out a little bit on offense. And uh, Temple had some special teams problems, uh, but again, their defense was able to kind of overcome those special team problems for them because they really hung tough. They've got a big game coming up pretty soon against Notre Dame. The Warriors College game day might be coming to Philadelphia, yeah. which would be a pretty cool thing for the city, I think. Yeah. Uh, so this has been the Steve Wilmot Show with the Shamney Redskins head coach Steve Wilmot. Before we go, I want to remind you that this Friday, 7 o'clock, we have the Chamonix hosting the Ben Salem Owls on WBCB1490.com. And the week after that, when the Chamonix takes on North Penn, we will have that game video streamed live at WBCB1490.com. Live from North Penn should be a good one there, too. But again, this week, 6.45 p.m., tune in to WBCB1490.com. He's Steve Wilmot. I'm Sean Lerman. This has been the Steve Wilmot Show, presented by Aria Health.